Hello, fellow crocheters. Welcome back. I've had several requests for an amigurumi video, so today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to successfully crochet the pieces for your amigurumis. These are so much fun to make and to play with, even for adults. It's hard to give them away to my grandchildren, but I do. So let's get started. Let's talk about patterns first. This is the pattern that I'm currently working on. This is from Teresa's Crochet Shop, and I've got a link in the video description below. You can get your amigurumi patterns anywhere, but make sure that you find a good amigurumi designer who's got good reviews on her patterns. So here's a sample of different styles. Here's two different styles of pattern writing for amigurumis. This first style starts with a chain two and six single crochet in the first chain. There's two different ways to start your amigurumi pieces, which would be the center of each of the pieces. You're going to be working in the rounds with single crochets. So the first style is that chain two and work all the stitches, however many it is, in the first chain. The second way to start them is with the magic ring and you would work the number of stitches into that magic ring. And I'm not going to demonstrate the magic ring for you today. I'll save that for another video. But you can see in this style here, we have three increase rounds. We've started with six stitches. We're going up to 12, 18, and 24. So these are increase rounds. These two rounds are working even because you're not changing the stitch count. And then these two rounds are decrease rounds because we're having less and less stitches in each round. This is the same instructions as this written a little differently. So here, the increase is written as two single crochet and next stitch. And in this pattern, it's just increase. So that is the same as two single crochet and next stitch. Now the decrease is spelled out D-E-C in each of these. So let's get started with making our first piece. And we're going to start, just like any other crochet project, with a slip knot. But I always make my slip knot with the tail being the strand that tightens my slip knot. And that's very important when you're working in the round so you can tighten up the center of your round and make it less noticeable. The hole will disappear. So if you haven't learned to make your slip knot with the tail tightening it, then check out my slip knot video. Okay, we'll start with two chains and we'll go ahead and work our six single crochet in the first of those two chains, which is also known as the second chain from the hook. So we work six single crochets into that one chain and they'll just start curving around and around until it meets the other side. Now, whenever we're crocheting amigurumis, we want to use nice tight stitches. We don't want loose stitches because when we stuff our pieces, we don't want the fiber fill to come out. And if their piece has loose stitches, you'll have holes in there and the fiber fill will work its way out. So tight stitches are a must in amigurumi. Now there is a difference between tight and too tight. If you have a hard time getting your hook into your stitches when you're working into them, then they're too tight. So you'll have to adjust your gauge. So we have our six stitches in our first round and we're ready to work our second round. And amigurumis are typically worked in a spiral, so we will not join to the first single crochet. 
instead we're going to just be working in that stitch and when you're working in a spiral you need to keep track of the beginning and end of your rounds so what I like to do is take a contrasting piece of yarn and drape it across between my last stitch and my first stitch on each round. So the second round, we're going to increase. We have single crochet two in each stitch around and then we'll have 12 stitches. So the way to work an increase and we have to go under both loops here, is simply to work two single crochet in the same stitch. You can see that there's two single crochet in that first stitch. Here's my two single crochet and here's the base of those. So that's the first increase and each of these six stitches we'll have two single crochets worked into it. So we are increasing our stitches. We're doubling them on this second round. We started with six and we're going to end up with 12. And each of these stitches gets two single crochet worked into them. We try to keep the same tension and we don't want this loop on the hook getting too big because that'll make a loose stitch on the top. So this is our last stitch, but I've only got one single crochet in there, so I need my second. Now, another tip for you is to check and count your stitches at the end of each round to make sure you've got the right number. So I'm not going to count those right now, but I'm going to move on to the third round. So my yarn is on the front and I'm going to drape it over to the back. Or you can say the yarn is on the back and drape it to the front. It doesn't matter either way. As long as you're going back and forth with this stitch marking yarn, you'll be fine. So we have two rounds done. And the next round also increases six stitches, goes from 12 to 18, but we do not increase in every stitch. We work one single crochet in the next stitch and then two in the following, and we do all of that in the parentheses six times. So let's start that round. We have one single crochet in the next stitch and two single crochet in the following stitch. So we have taken two stitches and made it into three. And we do that all the way around. We have one in the next stitch and two in the following stitch. And I will meet you when I get to the end of this round. Okay, here I am at the end of the round. I did one single crochet here and I'll do my final two here. So let's go ahead and count this round to make sure that we have the 18 that are in our pattern. We can start at this end or this end. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And with our yarn in here, it makes it easy to see where the beginning is. So if we were going to crochet the next round, we would just drape our yarn across and start here. And that round starts with single crochet two and then two single crochet in next stitch. So what that means is you will single crochet in the next two stitches, one single crochet in each, and then two single crochet in the following stitch. So the increases are further apart the farther and farther you get on these rounds. Here's a sample head, which is actually the head from the deer that I'm making. And I here you can see I started right here and then increased, increased, increased. Here is the section where all these rounds were worked even. 
with no increases, just the same number of stitches that was in the pattern. And here is where I started to decrease. So whenever you're making an amigurumi shape, you'll start in one place, you'll increase, you'll work even for a while, and then you'll decrease. And you have to follow the pattern for each piece of your amigurumi. So I've just taught you how to increase. Now I'm going to teach you how to decrease. This piece here, I have worked the first six rounds of our pattern. This is just a sample pattern, by the way. So I've worked my increase rounds and my even rounds, and now I'm ready for my first decrease round. And that says to single crochet two and then decrease six times. And we'll have six stitches less than the 24 that we had. So when it says single crochet two, what it means is to do one single crochet in each of the next stitches. And I always want to make sure that this loop is nice and snug on my hook when I start my stitches. So there's a one single crochet in each of the next two. Now to do a decrease, we're going to start a single crochet, but not finish it and then we're going to start a single crochet in the next stitch. And now we can finish it because we have three loops on the hook. So we'll yarn over and pull through all three. And you can see that I have two legs of my stitch, my decrease stitch, but I only have one top. So let's do that again. We wanna make sure, especially after a decrease, that this loop doesn't get too tight or too loose rather. What I found is sometimes my next stitch after the decrease tends to be a little loose and sloppy. So I always like to make sure that my yarn is nice and tight when I insert my hook and pull up my loop. So on this decrease round, see that's not too loose now. On this decrease round, we're working one single crochet in each of the next two and then a decrease. So the decrease is insert hook and pull up a loop. And then go to the next stitch, insert the hook and pull up a loop. With three loops on the hook, then you yarn over and pull through all three. So we've done two repeats of the single crochet in the next two, decrease, single crochet in the next two, decrease, and we would do that all the way around to our beginning. So I will meet you when I get to the end of this round. So here I am with my last four stitches in this round, and I'm going to do my single crochet in each of the next two, and then my decrease. We don't finish that stitch when we start it. We have to pull up a loop in each of those, then we finish our decrease. And here's my ending yarn, which I'll flip to the front. So the last round is single crochet one and decrease. So see there's less stitches between our decreases. And we'll just start that. We'll do one single crochet and then a decrease. And all the time that I'm doing these stitches, especially on the decrease rounds, I'm having good tension on my yarn. So if you don't have good tension with the hold that you have on your yarn, try different holds. And you can check out my video on holding the yarn and the hook if you'd like to try different holds. So there's one single crochet and a decrease, and we would just repeat this all the way around till we get to the beginning. There's that decrease. And that's how to work the decrease rounds. Now if your pattern includes pieces with color changes, let me teach you how to do a color change. Typically the pattern will have you change colors in the last stitch. So this is my last stitch of the round. And I will start the stitch 
with the current color, but I will finish the stitch with the new color. So to finish your stitch, you'll yarn over with the new color and pull through. And you can see that the old stitch has the old color on the top and at the bottom. And this loop on the hook is what's going to create our next stitch. So we would start our new round with the new color. And you can see that stitch has the new color on the top and on the bottom. And whenever you're changing colors, you'll want to adjust the top loop a little bit and the base of that stitch, that last stitch, because those can get a little bit loose. Another thing is whenever you're crocheting your pieces, when you've gotten to a certain distance from the beginning, I like to weave in that beginning tail. I tighten it a little bit, and I can tighten it because I've made my slip knot correctly. Then I thread my yarn in my tapestry needle, and I go the same direction that the yarn is going under the legs of my single crochet on the back of my work. There's the front and here's the back. This will be inside. So if you have some pieces that are fairly narrow, such as this piece here, this is getting narrow up here. And I had to weave in my end here before I got too far along because it's almost impossible to take some of these pieces and flip them wrong side out. So you've got to weave in your ends, make them nice and tight, and then I like to go over one strand and go back the other direction. These toys will be given lots of wear and tear and love over the years by children, grandchildren, adults, whoever, and you want to make sure those tails are nice and tight. Now you don't even have to trim this off because it's going to be on the inside and there's going to be fiber fill in there. I would also take the tails from the color change and I would typically trim this off and I would tie those together on the inside into a square knot and that's going to make that stronger as well after you've adjusted those. You don't want them too tight or too loose. So go ahead and just tie those on the inside. You don't have to cut those off either and leave those there. When you get to the end of your piece and you've crocheted the whole thing, then it's time to pull out your yarn marker. But that keeps you in the right place for every round that you're working. Because if you just keep working a spiral, you don't know when you've gotten to the beginning or the end of the round. So that keeps you on the right track. Now, if you're going to be changing colors a lot, this is what this style of changing colors looks like. If you don't mind the jog in that, that's fine. I don't mind it that much. These are for my grandchildren and they really are not gonna care that the black doesn't meet up with the black. But I'll be bringing you another video in the future with showing you how to change colors and they will not be jogging like this. They'll line up nice and even. So sub subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that video in the future. Now that you've learned how to crochet the pieces for your amigurumi, with the increases and decreases and color changes, then go ahead and make all the pieces according to your pattern. Here I've got all the pieces from the deer that I'm making, and I've already stuffed some of them, but they're not sewn together yet. So join me in my next video where I'll be teaching you to stuff your amigurumi pieces and sew the pieces together. Then you'll have finished amigurumi ready to play with by you or your grandchildren or whoever. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and happy amigurumi crocheting to you. Amigurumis! Woo! They're so much fun!